Coach, what's going on? Coach, how's it going? Can you hear me? I can. Sound good. Sound good. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Ready to so, roll? Uh, yeah, I'm ready to roll when you are. If you want to present and I'll get out of your way, you can get going. All right. Can you see it? You, yes, sir. Let's get it. All right. So, uh, just a quick introduction. It always helps to know who, uh, you know, who's presenting, who you're talking to, and everything. Uh, Coach Andrew Workman. I'm the O-line coach and run game coordinator at West Virginia State University. Um, I'm originally from West Virginia, really, really deep West Virginia. So, if anybody needs any subtitles, just kind of, you know, let me know. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll try to hook you up with that. I think YouTube actually does that for you, but. Uh, you know, just kind of giving you a brief overview of our uh, our base run scheme and then our mid zone scheme, okay? And we'll kind of get into what that is, and uh, you know, getting more detail into that. So a uh, little bit more about me, uh, my professional journey uh, from 2013 to 2017, directly after graduating high school, I was in the United States Marine Corps. Um, you know, I was in an infantry battalion and an artillery unit, and uh, did that for four years. Deployed a couple times. Got out, uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, my high school coach hit me up and was just like, hey, uh, you want to coach some ball? I said, yes, sure. So I helped them out that fall. Uh, two days after I was in a staff meeting talking about artillery, I was in a staff meeting talking about dive and uh, counter and trap. So <laughs> pretty interesting there. And then, um, you know, I ended up at West Virginia State University. Uh, my wife and I moved to that, you know, the Charleston area. That's in the capital city. I mean, it's 10 minutes outside. And, uh, you know, kind of showed up one day with a resume and they just so happened to be needing a, a student assistant. So uh, for a semester, I helped out with safeties. And um, immediately after that, got promoted to tight end fullbacks and uh, coached there from 18 to 20. Um, got to leave there, uh, took an O-line job at Huntington High School right down the road. One of the bigger schools in our state, um, starting right tackle from Tennessee this past year, uh, was a Huntington High guy. Um, from there, you know, I uh, spent the spring season there. Uh, we did some flex day workouts. We got the off season in, got the O line ready to roll. Um, took a job down at Guilford College in Greensboro, North Carolina. I think a few of you guys are familiar with it. I uh, was there for the fall of 2021. And, uh, you know, uh, kind of, you know, didn't work out. My wife and I decided not to move down to that area and uh, resigned, came back up to West Virginia. And, um, you know, Coach Pennington hit me up about February, said, you know, uh, you want to, you know, want to interview for the O-line job? And I said, yeah, of course. So I did, got the job, been rolling, hooking and jabbing ever since. All right. So just a couple of, uh, you know, a couple stats always helps to gauge what we're talking about and the importance it has on our offense. Uh, so in 2021, uh, the fall, I was not there. The fall before I got there, you know, very modest rushing season. You know, fourth in the conference, total rushing, you know, 16, 62 yards, 151 yards per game, uh, four, you know, four yards per carry. Not a bad season. All right. Um, you know, we, uh, we really wanted to change things up, move faster, much faster, spread it out more, kind of a spread and shred mentality. So uh, we kind of got on the board, you know, started talking about what we want to do with that. We implemented, a, you know, mid zone as our base run scheme. And uh, I kind of took a wing T kind of philosophy with me there uh you know couple plays but a bunch of ways to dress it up make the simple look complex um and what that did for us is uh, you know pretty pretty good for us uh we ended up rushing for the you know we were a top rusher in the mountain east we were a top rushing offense in the super region one that's about four or five conferences in division two we were 22nd in uh division two rushing uh we rushed for a total of 2285 207 yards per game, 207.7, 4.9 yards per carry. Uh, you know, our starting running back, he, uh, you know, rushed for 859, second string 643, and our quarterback rushed for 499 yards. So, you know, very uh, mid zone did a lot for us. Okay, so uh, moving forward, you know, mid zone itself, 256 attempts, you know, 1,719 total yards, 6.7 yards per carry. All right, you can look at the bottom. I've got it broken down into inefficient, negatives, efficient, and explosive. And efficient is anything three yards or more. And explosive is anything over 12 yards in terms of the run game. Negative is negative. I count zero as negative as well. Um, and inefficient would be below three yards. So we had three 300-yard rushing games and one 298. 
mid zone, you know, kind of was a big part of that, as you can see. Okay, when I got there in the spring, uh, when the way we the way we got here, we wanted to move fast. We wanted to be simple. We wanted to have all the answers there. Uh, we wasn't quite athletic enough to run wide zone, you know, get there moving. Uh, we wasn't quite big, you know, and not, you know, uh, dominant enough to run tight zone consistently or run power every play. Uh, so we needed a middle ground. <clears throat> you know, one of my first thoughts were, you know, go gap scheme, go GT, but really this, it just didn't mesh with the rest of the offense. So ended up on mid zone late in the spring. Okay. Just to show you kind of what we're working with, you know, personnel wise, because I feel like when you develop a run game, you have to take personnel in, into account. Okay. We had four alignment under six foot. We only had one at six. You know, you can see right there, our average, you know, weight is 280 pounds. So we had some really small guys, really, you know, not a lot of large guys, but you know, that's, that's kind of what we were working with. We were a lot like a hand, right? You got five fingers, well, four fingers and a thumb. Okay, we had a guy who looked like a bowling ball at right guard. We had a guy that looked like a division one tackle, left tackle, and we had a center playing right tackle. Um, so that's kind of how, how that went. All right, what, you know, what made those guys different is uh, whenever I first got there, something, you know, I met with a lot of the upper class because a lot of those guys were there when I was at West Virginia State before. Um, you know, they wanted to, you know, really reemphasize that dominant, you know, just violent culture. OK, so that's that's the first thing that I started doing when I got there is just reestablishing that we're going to come out, punch you in the mouth and keep punching until, you know, we, we can't anymore. Um, that's that's you know, that's that's part of what we do. You know, it's not about what we do. It's how we do it. I think, you know, the G.I. Joe thing on the left, knowing half the battle. The other half is extreme violence. All right. Uh, straight from our manual, this is our culture. Um, you know, a lot of the guys recognize this through Cobra, Cobra Kai and not Karate Kid, and that kind of hurts my heart a little bit, but it is what it is. I think, you know, what's more beautiful and more fitting to an offensive lineman than, you know, strike first. You want to get your hands on somebody, strike hard, knock the breath out, get them on the heels, show no mercy, follow through, take them to their coach on their sidelines, make them, you know, make them ask to go home. All right, our core values, family, aggression, accountability, commitment. Okay, mission. Straight from my mission statement, all right, build, all right? We want to build a culture of growth, rest, respect, and violence. Again, there's that word violence. If you're not playing violent on the O-line, all right, then you're going to get yourself hurt. You're going to get somebody else hurt, okay? Somebody on that line is going to be playing violent. You need to be one of them, period, okay? When I say build, it's an acronym. Acronym, believe, understand, invest, love, and develop, okay? That's what we're going to do for each other, all right? We're going to move defenders from point A to point B against their will, period. We're going to protect the quarterback, period. All right, we're going to police the pile. If there's a pile, it's moving towards the enemy, period. Okay, our mindset, all right, we're going to make, you know, we're going to move fast. We're going to break things, okay? If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, all right? Whatever it takes, that's what it takes, and the obstacle that's in our way is our way, okay? You know, I don't just scream things in the, into existence. Now, you know, I've got some good vocal cords on me, I'm told. And I get, I get creative with some profanity, I'm also told. But I don't just scream it into existence. Uh, I did teach high school for a while. Um, I believe there is a progression to everything. And I am not original with this progression. Uh, a lot of people use this progression. It's just, you know, me putting my thoughts together and enabling me to have a progression to teach. Okay. Uh, now this, this clinic is based on the scheme. So I want to get through this, you know, individual part pretty fast. So if anybody wants any of the, uh, the film for the individual drills or the progressions, hit me up. I'll have my contact info at the end. All right. My teaching progression is pretty simple. It's up here. We're going to talk about approach, contact, and follow through. All right. Approach, contact, and follow through. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about. Just a little example of mid zone indie progression. All right. Approach. We're going to get on board starts. After that, read, react board. So basically, we're going to have a first level defender. You know, he's either going to make a move or he's going to press vertical. Our guys got to take that lateral step. They got to see what's going on. They either climb and pass off or they, you know, throw him out and drive. Very simple. Scoot, we'll talk about that in a minute. Something we do, something, uh, you know, a couple coaches have talked about today, but scoot footwork, scoot technique, that's something we do. We'll do it on air and with a defender. Okay, contact. We're going to get in a nice demeanor. Uh, we're not just going to go out there with our feet together. All right, we're going to get out there with gator legs. 
We're going to have a nice slight forward lean. We're going to get our toes 45 out and all that weight on our instep, and we're going to turn this thing into a power clean. We don't want to, we don't want to press defenders as much as we want to lift and drive defenders. All right. So we're going to, do, we're a double under fit team. Um, you know, we're going to double under fit any, any chance that we can and it's feasible. We're going to do it just because it's what we're better at. Uh, you know, and we're going to work on torque strikes and tearing through that. Uh, tight reaches. It's, it's also a, a, you know, a sub progression within that. Uh, followed through two point explosion. Uh, the bloom drive drill is an excellent drill for uh, getting those hips involved and really lifting and finishing a defender. The weave drill, making sure you keep that, you know, good demeanor through your finish and you're ready to, you know, change direction through that out, throughout that block and throw outs, you know, front side tackle, front side guard versus a three and a five. We want to get those guys thrown out. We'll go over that later. All right. You know, run game technique, we want to, you know, fit low to high. We want to surround the defender with our feet. All right. We don't want to go out there and get our hands on this guy and try to, if you've ever been stuck in a ditch, all right, I'm from West Virginia, there's a lot of ditches around here, a lot of two lane, one lane roads. If you've ever been stuck in a ditch, you put your hands on that bumper, you put your feet close together and you're pushing down on that, trying to get it out, it'd be, you know, pretty long afternoon. But you get up underneath that fender, you lift, you know, and you drive it, get those hips involved, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get out of that ditch, okay? Uh, that's, you know, part of surrounding the defender with our feet. It also helps us not get thrown out of the way ourselves, keeps us balanced, keeps us under our base. All right. Uh, we want to strike tight. Like I said, we're a double under fit team, but, uh, you know, we got guys that come in that don't quite grasp that at first. So I just tell them, hey, we're going to work on that until then. Just keep, keep those thumbs tight. Keep those elbows pointed at the ground. All right. Hide them. All right. Keep them tight against the ribs. Okay, stay on the run. It's a track meet through your aiming point. Okay, uh, three types of force we have to understand too is the difference between push, lift, and torque. Okay, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, uh, but if you want this slide again, my contacts at the end. All right, we're a very, very tempo team. We average about 12 and a half seconds, you know, per snap. Uh, a lot of that has to do with our center getting his hand on the ball, putting his cleats on the ground, and getting everybody set and ID in the front. Okay, he will never leave the hashes. His eyes will find that line judge immediately, and we will get set and we'll be ready to go. All right. So uh, the first thing you got to understand about our mid zone game is how we ID the front. Okay, There's two two primary fronts. You got even, you got odd. Okay, very simply put, you look on the left at our even fronts that I've got put up for you. The yellow box, gold box, represents the middle three. All right. There's two ways to look at it. The quick way. All right. Crash course way. The little blue dotted line within that gold box, that is the center's nose. All right, even front, first level, there's nobody over the center's nose. Odd front, first level, there's somebody directly over the center's nose. That's one way to look at it. Second way to look at it. In the middle three, there's two covered players in an even front. All right, in the middle three in an odd front, there's one player covered in the middle three, all right? Then you gotta look at the, you know, the second area that we have to worry about in the box, all right? The second level, okay? So we ID even, odd, and on top of that, we ID split or stack, okay? And that is very self-explanatory. The blue, lot, blue, lot, blue dotted line, again, somebody is either over the center's nose or he's not over the center's nose. Now, off of those, we've got, a, you know, our four one boxes, we have to ID a little differently, all right? You know, even light, we call it light, all right? Light, meaning there's only one backer in the box, okay? We've got a minus stack and plus backer. We treat minus and stack as the exact same. Okay. And what that, ha what that does for us, basically we have sift rules on the back of our base uh, mid zone play. All right. If we get an even plus, we can go ahead and assume that backside backer is out of the box. He's out of the picture. It's probably going to be a lock. So when that center gets up there, Hey, even plus, even plus that backside tackle and that backside guard look at each other. It's like, it's probably locked, man. All right, he's still got to sift it out, but he's ready to lock it up in the back of his mind. We get that stack or that minus backer. They're trying to play us outside in with that uh, field backer, trying to give us the pirate, you know, stunt. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and push our ID out. All right, we're going to get a three-man game out there with them. Okay. Why mid zone? Well, it's relatively easy to teach and comprehend. Uh, it helps with undersized O linemen. Simple to identify the front, play fast, backfield action. It, it, it moves defenders. It's not tight zone, it's not wide zone, but it's moving defenders ever so slightly so we can stretch and function. All right? Limits negative plays for us. 
It absorbs movement. All the answers are built in. All right. You can run RPO, zone read game. You can go 21 personnel, lock it up and fluff it. You can do a little bit of everything. Now, what is mid zone? Very simply put right here, tight zone, running back in and towards that backside hip of the center for us. We do not ID linebackers. All right. We track everything. We're moving so fast. That's just what's easiest for us. And it also helps us as O linemen teach the scheme better. Okay. So when we know we're going to take the most dangerous player to our spot. All right. Now all those, those, those framing defenses, those defenses start in the four two and they want to get a stand of hat and box by bringing that safety down, rocking those backers back or vice versa. All right. We're taking the most dangerous man to our spot. We're, we're accounted for. All right. So multiple reasons why we track it. Another reason why we track it is because I tell the guys all the time, we don't block front. I don't care what front they come out in. We don't block front here. We block fit. We learn defensive fits very, very thoroughly. Okay. Uh, and I, you know, tr that plus tracking everything helps us learn the scheme and, you know, the intent of the play itself, which means we can understand why we use certain techniques. Okay. Couple examples. Here's an example of our tight zone run. All right, you can see 17. He's going to aim towards 70's backside hip. Okay, you can get a nice combo in the middle there. We locked it up on the backside because it was a 4-1 box. Okay, everything is vertical. We're re really getting vertical to those spots. We make a nice cut. We get vertical on it. Easy day. All right. Here's a good look at the wide zone. All right. Everything is just wide, very, very wide. Now, that front side five take decided he wanted to contain. So this is just a much stretchier version of our mid zone at that time. All right, everybody's on a run. They're running that track meet. We're stretching and puncturing uh, at a much wider angle, okay? All right, running back rules. Now, you're going to notice I put a question mark up at the top over the title. Why do I do that? Well, you give these running back rules, all right, to the running backs. But what you got to understand is you got to be like water with the running back position. Right, those guys aren't op offensive linemen. They're not as technical. The great ones are. All right. But again, you got to understand your personnel. OK. Understand your personnel. Be like water. All right. Fluid. That being said, we're going to aim him towards the front side guards, front side hip. We want to hit this right up B gap. All right. We want to hit this right up B gap. OK. Now, running back rules. He's going to read the first down lineman, pass the center. First down lineman, pass the center. If we're running towards the three tech, we're going to check for pinch, read the hat, all right, on the backside A gap, make a cut, okay? We're running towards the open B gap. We're going to press that combo and read the center's block. If he gets hat over that two eye or shade, we're hitting it. We're hitting the front side. If he don't, we're hitting it right up there, uh, hit it right off the center's butt. All right, here's our rules. We got basic covered, uncovered rules. And here's a little tree. You know, I've both kind of bastardized and put together for myself. And, you know, I, again, I'm not original. I, I don't claim to be. I don't claim to be a guru. I just take what I find and I implement what works for us. Okay, that's huge. Find what works for you. This works for me. What is covered and what is uncovered? Covered. There's a defender on your body somewhere, whether it's shaded front side, head up or back side. We treat head up as back side. What is uncovered? There's nobody shaded on you at all on the first level. Okay. All right. We're always going to step play side. We're lateral, vertical footwork or scoot. Okay. One of the two. Okay. Very simply put, I won't go into this too far, but basically we're going to get a knee read if we're uncovered to the play side with an open gap. Again, combos. All right. If you're covered backside, half man. If you're uncovered with a closed play side gap, half man. All right. These are just all that explained. All right, we won't go into it. Scoot technique, why scoot? Okay, scoot, all right. Uh, scoot's a three-step progression, all right? That's when you need to close space and get vertical while staying square. All right, you get nice vertical push on it. You can rewind and get displacement against movement. All right, it allows you to get on the same level as the post or lead man, depending on how you call your combos. All right, uh, again, gives you leverage. When you want to use it, uncovered alignment in our mid-zone scheme is going to probably scoot. All right, and there are certain situations where we won't like sifting, all right, on the back side versus the head up technique, all right, or and a stack linebacker in combos. 
versus loose techniques. You get that play side, not, excuse me, nine technique, that four eye with the, uh, against the front side guard. That's when we're going to use it. Okay, just a couple drills we do to work scoot. All right, man in the middle is our center. He's this is really good for him. All right, getting vertical on that third step, staying square, keeping those hands and elbows tight. All right, he cheats and checks his feet at the end. All right, bad example. Guy on the left, you can kind of see he hops about three times, but he doesn't actually get his feet in the ground until he's working vertical. If that happens, all right, you can get knocked in the teeth and you're going to end up in the running back's lap. We don't want that. We want to attack them on their side of the line of scrimmage, okay? Just another example of it right here, full line, all scoots. That's a technique that really helps us, all right? Combos are combos, right? If we get a funky look or if they're not lined up, we're going to give a Zelda Zorro call, and all that is is that's our full line tracking, all right? We're full zoning it, everything, okay? And if we need to out it, we're going to call out, all right? Combos, not all of them are made the same, all right? All right, we're, we, you know, with mid zone, we're going to stab our Heisman and then angle drive if, he's, if the linebacker is plus on that combo. If the linebacker is stacked, or minus, we're going to go ahead and double under fit, all right, and we're going to scoot it, okay? It's all linebacker leverage and technique against the first level, okay? Here's a couple looks at it. Not great, but the intent is there. That was a gallop, all right? So here's our base mid zone full. All right, we're not locking the back side. Okay, again, covered, uncovered. All right. Here's what we're looking at. Again, aiming towards that B gap. We get the three tech front side, running backs reading the three tech. Okay, we're gonna be lateral vertical across the board. We're gonna throw out and drive. This is a great bump by our center, okay? He uses scoop footwork here. He bumps that three tech over, opens that A gap wide open. And climbs to the linebacker. Running back sees that. He runs off the center's butt. Backside, against that backside shade, there's three ways you can look at it. You can ricochet that, you can fold it, or you can do what we do against, you know, base looks which is we're going to tell that guard the same thing we tell the front side guard your lateral vertical i don't care if you reach the guy all right you're going to double under fit him if he contains that a gap you are going to torque throw him out and drive him all right you're going to expand that backside b gap three gaps wide if you get a hat you're going to press vertical and reach him. that's simple all right backside tackle he's got sift rules we've got that linebacker right where he needs to be to not have to sift it all right we just have to go straight up to him Okay, this is a really good look at a sift right here by our backside tackle. All right, left tackle, looking at him. Okay, that linebacker's playing outside. He's gonna combo with Casper. He's gonna end up locking it right there, getting vertical. Another thing that works for us, all right, here's a good look against movement. All right, you're going to see the defender on the left. They're going to try to do an inside game on us. That lateral vertical footwork allows us to get hands on. All right, get just enough of them. Here's a really good backside cut by our running back. Okay, we get the front side shade. We get a nice pass off by our front side tackle. I think if we hit this front side, we're still good to go, but we decide to cut it back. Okay. Try to get a little slant for some reason by that three tech. Pretty sure he messed up there. We pick it up. We're vertical. We're scoring touchdowns. All right. So here's a good look against odd. Okay, we get that four eye front side. We're going to use what we call a surge on both of these combos. Well, on the combo right here, because this linebacker is plus on this combo. What that means is we're going to ricochet right here. We're going to scoot. Try to take this over, and we're going to ricochet right there. If we get any sort of movement, he's just going to go ahead and tight track it up. All right, staying under control. He decides to tight track it up. 
We hit it out the front door. We score. Okay. There's another look against Todd. Well, that one didn't play. Here's a look against Odd when they, uh, you know, we had a head up four and we had a nine. Uh, they tried to twist on us from the backside. Our left tackle does a great job here sifting this, sorting it out, and taking the most dangerous. We hit it out the front door. Okay, we get a combo on that nose. We scoot the left guard. He climbs. We throw out a right tackle. Open that B-gap wide open. Okay. Here's a great look against front side pinch. We're looking at the right side towards the field. Okay. Passing it off. Climbing to the next level. Tight tracking it up. Getting hands on. Here's a great Rico by our left guard here. Ricochet. They called Surge here. He decided to Rico this up to 44. A very light Rico, but it got the job done. We hit it out the front door. Receiver's got some blocking for once. You can't beat that. Okay. And, uh, you know, another part of this game, again, our quarterback rushed for 499. When they start over-pursuing and they start playing unsound on the backside, we just tell our guy to rip it and run. And he does that. Okay. Rip it and run. He scores there. Okay, right here, we full zoned it. That calls in the overflow. Nice boundary pull. He's off to the races. All right. Okay, one of our 11 personnel variations is we're gonna put a tight end on the front side. We're gonna plus it. We call it plussing, okay? It is as simple as it sounds. He's gonna take the plus one, all right, area. Pass the guy that we take. If he's in a fullback, okay, he's going to step play side and get vertical on the backer. If he's in a wing, depending on that guy's uh, technique, he's either going to uh, long arm that and climb vertical tight, or he's going to go wide and go attack the safety, depending on that technique. So we might get a combo with the tight end if so. Hey, Coach, I'm going to let you roll until I can get uh, a hold of Coach Carlson. All right, good to go. Hey, yeah. so uh, one of our adjustments, again, we call a 4-3 box. Kind of how we call a 4-1 box even light. We call a 4-3 box even heavy. Uh, when we plus it and we hear that even heavy call, our tight end is going to make a call to our quarterback and our O-line. Our O-line knows it automatically, but just to make sure he's making that call, okay? And what it does, instead of us you know, locking in or doing anything on the backside like that and our center working to the middle linebacker, we're going to go ahead and push it out, all right, to that overhang or that third linebacker. We're going to let that tight end take the mic, all right. I don't have film of this yet. We weren't put, we were not put in this situation, but uh, pass this. All right, it's a good look at our lock, okay. So wants to play. This is our lock variation, okay. They try to twist us on the back side here to the left. All right, we get nice footwork and a nice throw out on the play side. We pick everything up. They try to fit it like inside zone and go downhill. We hit it out B gap and there's nobody there to account for us. That's the thing about mid zone, gentlemen. All right, teams will want to fit you like inside zone, tight zone, and teams will try to fit you like wide zone. Neither will be correct. Neither will be correct. All right, neither. All right, here's another variation uh, we call it weird and wild, or we did at the time. Uh, we're going to keep our sift rules on the back side. We're going to have a, uh, what you would call an insert player on the back side from the tight end, okay? And, uh, again, if we get a 4-2 box, we're going to go ahead and make a lock call here. Lock, lock, auto, lock, lock against a 4-2 box, okay? Or, you know, a, uh, an odd front anytime there's not – a even heavy front. We're going to go ahead and lock, lock it. Gets an odd our backside tackle with tight reach set. Okay. Here's a good look at it. Running to our hour right right now. 
We lock, lock it. We get an insert player. All right. They try to fit downhill. We run through an arm tackle. We're hitting the B gap wide open. Turns into a very wide A gap where B gap used to be. Good throw out right there. All right. Here's a good look from a few years back. Same concept. Getting vertical. All right, same concepts here. We're doing it out of a wing. All right, it's lock, lock. We got that, that shade there, okay? So we're gonna drive that B-gap wide open. Look at the spacing we get from that. Again, not telling that right guard to reach here. He's gonna be lateral vertical and he's gonna throw this guy out. This is one approach you can take if you don't wanna ricochet and you, you, know, you don't wanna fold. All right, and just like we had the 4-3, the, the seven-man box adjustment with the plus, we have it for this as well. Again, we get that even heavy call, tight end makes the call to the quarterback. He's zone reading the backside defensive end. We are no longer locking that. That backside tackle is either going to combo up to the backside backer or he's going to shift up to that backside backer. All right, uh, that tight end is going to take the, the mic linebacker, and that front side combo is working to the front side backer. Okay, that's just one of the adjustments we had. Okay, here's a decent one right here. I think he ends up passing this off, and collecting most dangerous. Hey, Coach, let me get you finish this one up, and I'm going to get Coach Carlson in. All right, good to go. Right, one more one more clip here. All right, we get a nice motion. Okay, 4-3 box, even heavy, even heavy. Okay. They slant on us. We get a nice pull there. Okay, just a couple adjustments we have. Now, again, some of the adjustments you can do, this is the last, I won't show any film because I'll, I'll get into it and I'll talk for three hours. But some of the other adjustments you can do, again, is folding, all right? So pinning and pulling. Uh, and what we do is um, the puller ends up being the, the so if, I, if we pulled the center, if we ran what we call the coochie pull, okay? Our front side guard is going to block back on that shade or two eye our center is going to skip pull around and become the new right guard of the scheme, taking his zone, okay? Uh, and with him skip pulling and staying square, he is able to do that, pick up movement if we get it, and we can still pass it off like normal, okay? Um, Coach, that's all I've got. Uh, let me uh, get my contact info up real quick. I've got film from all of this, all right? If you need anything from this presentation, uh, you want to talk some ball, our doors are always open at West Virginia State. Here's my contact info. Fairly easy to find. All right, this is my cell number, not a work number. Uh, this is my email. You can find me on the school's web, uh, the athletic website as well. All right, that's, awesome. uh, that's <clears throat> all I got, Coach. I appreciate you, Coach. Um, yeah, no problem. I really appreciate the opportunity, Coach, and uh, thank you to everybody who was listening in. No doubt. All right.